Hello and welcome everyone. I am Lady Calamir and tonight's assistant is going to be Miss Kitty. And today's video, we're going to be talking about a very special God to me. He is an Aztec God and his name is Tezcatlipoca. Tezcatlipoca. His name means smoking mirrors. Here is a image I made of him. So, who is he? He is one of the gods on this. As you can see, that's him. Right here, the jaguar god. She's being very attentive today. Tezcatlipoca is extremely powerful. And he is a god of shapeshifters, witches, sorcerers, shamans, divinators, divina ah, fortune tellers, and those who scryers, and those who do divinations, magicians, occultists. Among other things, he is a warrior god, as well as protector of the unfortunate. And he is a dark god. And let me go get him his obsidian, which he's supposed to have. Sorry, folks. Some reason there we are. I took this away for a second so that it wouldn't get broken by the cats. Sometimes I keep a black obsidian heart. Now his stone was actually the volcanic glass called obsidian. And obsidian is really good for scrying black mirrors and such put that over here for some reason I just don't trust this around the cats this is one of my scrying balls I also have a giant obsidian ball so his name means smoking mirror which deals with obsidian so anyways he his Nahual, which Nahual means, uh, he's a Nahual, he's a, sh a shapeshifter, like a sorcerer shapeshifter. Now, Nahual, now he's called Nahual, but Nahual, Nahual is his main animal spirit. His main animal spirit is a jaguar. His other spirits are, that he works with, that animals will work with, is a turkey, vulture, a uh, coyote and sometimes even uh, he's also called a precious owl one of his names so owl works with him monkey and some sources say skunk in fact his constellation is the ursa major and what we see as the great bear the aztecs saw as the con like a jaguar Now his attributes, of course, is obsidian mirror. And I'm gonna describe why he has those colors there. So why does he have those colors here? Okay, so you see that he is in the midst of shape-shifting. Is he turning into a jaguar or is he turning into a human male? He is described in some uh, pictures as having yellow and black stripes. And as you can see, the obsidian black eyes who represent the dark eyes. Now, he is a god of crossroads. So we got the crossroads here. Why do we have black, white, red, and blue? Okay, so there are four Tezcatlipoca. We have the, the white, the white Tezcatlipoca, which is Quetzalcoatl. 
the blue Tezcat Lepoca, which is also a very important god, Wipokli, which is Pokli, sorry, and the red Tezcat Lepoca, which is Shipe Totec, and of course the northern Tezcat Lepoca is Tezcat Lepoca, who we are speaking with about now. So, and yes, Tezcatlipoca and Quetzalcato like to battle it out. And why, why, why? Quetzalcato is kind of like the polar opposite. Oh, Miss Lady Boss, come here. Hey, Queen. So, Quetzalcato is the polar opposite. Where Quetzalcato is the light god, Tezcatlipoca is the dark god in every sense. Quetzalcoatl is light, Tezcatlipoca is dark, and we see them battling each other. As we see in witches, witchcraft in Wicca, where in the older time, it was wolf versus deer, where deer represent the light half of the year, and the wolf represents the dark half of the year. So when the deer won, the light half of the year won. When the wolf won, the dark half of the year won. Oh, we have Miss Jealous here. She wants to fight with Miss Kitty. How dare you take my spot? Well, I told you to come here. So, and as we have the Holly King versus the Oak King. The Oak King is the light half of the year and the Holly King the dark half. Come here, Lady Boss. You both can share. Oh, she's mad. She's mad. Miss Kitty wants to be. So, as we see, Quetzalcoatl represents the bright light half and this Tezcatlipoca represents the dark half. Quetzalcoatl day, Tezcatlipoca night. Quetzalcoatl light, Tezcatlipoca shadows. Where we see Quetzalcoatl more solar, we see Tezcatlipoca more lunar. So we see the yin and yang. The light versus the dark and the dark versus the light. Now, in okay there were five suns the first world or the first sun Tezcatlipoca ruled now the fifth sun the fifth final world which is our sun Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca did join together to help create the fifth world after the fourth world drowned in the flood oh my god come on That was Sir Mimi crashing things. So, sorry about that. Wait a minute, I talked about death and destruction. We got Sir Mimi knocking things off my altar. And being an all around asshole. So, Tezcatlipoca has some places that he prefers. He loves the crossroads. He also deals with the underworld. He's also the Temesco. Temesco is a traditional Aztec bathhouse. And he also likes to hot hang out in the Earth's core. Which is a realm that's inhabited by the spirits of the jaguar. So Tezcatlipoca is a na okay Nahuatl world word. Nahuatl is what the Aztecs spoke. They didn't speak Aztecian. Okay, I hate that would be oh the Aztecian language. It's Nahuatl, and they were the Mexica people who built the Aztec Empire, and also singular Mexicatl. I don't know where my obsidian went. Oh, here it is. So he, Tezcatlipoca, is a child of Omet. Oh, what's his name? Ometiel. Am I saying it right? I'm asking you. Okay, so 
I'm just being distracted right now. I see that there's going to be a cat fight. I have five, four cats, so <laughs> please deal with me. So, Tezcatlipoca is a very powerful god. He's all-seeing, all-knowing. He's He knows a lot, and he's very powerful. And he has, as you can see, a obsidian leg. Well, actually, where he lost his leg in the help of creating the fifth son with Quetzalcoatl. Oh my God, why are they doing this? So, please excuse me, I am not using notes, nor am I using any script, so, stop! Anyways, so now we got the second star of the show, Lady Bost, who just stared down Miss Kitty and took her spot. I don't know why they can't share. So, what? Tezcatlipoca, he, he's been much maligned, even though he can be, he has a very, uh, he could be an enemy. In fact, one of his name is Yoto, which is enemy and warrior. Well, Yoto is warrior, but he also has a name meaning enemy of both sides. So, he is a god of warriors, but he also is said to hide out in crossroads where he will challenge a warrior and even threaten him. He is a god that can make someone rich and make the rich poor. And if he's pissed at you, he can bring pestilence and disease. In fact, that's, he's said sometimes to come as a big dark blob bringing disease sickness plagues and pestilence so it says Kali Polka wears mirrors Sometimes he is, sometimes his foot doesn't have an, a, an obsidian mirror. Sometimes it's actually a snake. And that's another animal that he deals with, snakes. And sometimes he wears them. He can wear obsidian on, like, his front, the back, on his head. And he can wear, uh, he holds sometimes a obsidian mirror where he scries, where he can read your thoughts, where he can hear what you say he can know what you are doing what you've done he knows the past present and future and possible futures and what roads that you can take these cats are going to drive me loony Tezcatli Polka is also an, an, a god of thieves and even uh, criminals, which is interesting. And he can also punish evil do doers, which is not an interesting thing. That's why I said it's interesting. He said to hold four arrows where he, he likes to punish those who piss him off and those who uh, do terrible things. Although 
he is the god of obsidian and he also in the aztec belief said that he was the one that bought human sacrifice where they use an obsidian knife and obsidian is very sharp where they use the obsidian knife to do the sacrifice to, to rip out the heart the hearts and literally flay the skins of their victims and sometimes they would dance with it like Ed Gein would with you know or like Leatherface on Texas Chainsaw Massacre He is also a patron god of the aristocracy. And also, he loves festivities. He is a god of festivities and parties and and drinking and debauchery. If I say the phase of the moon, he definitely represents the, the waning moon and the dark half, the dark moon. Though he is a god of night, especially midnight and beyond. So, I mean, you could start doing his rituals at during the night. And, and he is a nocturnal god. He's very much a nocturnal god. So yes, he does deal with some solar. He does deal with some solar things. Like I said, he was a god of of a solar god in the first world, and now he seems more attuned to the night. There are different stories with the different gods, and one of the things is. That he said to have actually created the first dogs. So after, so after the, right after the destruction of the fourth world, the fourth sun. On a Cyprus boat, boat the the old survivors were Nane. They were old elderly Nana, Nane and Tata, and they were kind of boisterous and. And they decided to cook some fish in which the odor, the smell, really upset two of these two gods. It was one god and one goddess. And they vociferously complained to Tezcatlipoca. And he kind of got ahead of himself. I guess he got too mean and he beheaded them. He literally decapitated them. Then he decided to put that as a joke. He guess as a joke he put because he does have a dark sense of humor he put the heads on their asses and turned them into dogs he literally took their heads off put it on their backsides and turned them into dogs now Tezcatlipoca really loves music this god really enjoys music especially any music, but especially flutes. Now, he decided he wants the music, music. So he decided to get one of the uh, spirits of, of the black wind to go up to we to the sun god to go get some music from the musicians. Now the sun god knew what was going to happen. And he told his musicians not to give any music. But this spirit that Tezcatlipoca has sent, which the spirit needed help from the other animals of Tezcatlipoca, which he asked for the mermaid the turtle and the whale to build a bridge to get up to where he needs to go. Now the musicians were told not to give any music, but they were enchanted by this wind spirit and gave some music in which the sun god punished him. But 
because of the punishment the spirit brought music to the earth. So Tezcatlipoca really loves his flutes and loves music. And did I mention he likes to party? And did I mention he has a sick sense of humor sometimes? Sometimes he said he can't be trusted. That he will come on earth as a skeleton and his ribcage will open up like do doors. And if one is brave enough, they can grab his heart. And if you grab his heart, he is said to give you uh, power, prestige, money. But sometimes he would break his promises. His colors are definitely black, as well as black and red. Now, when the Spaniards came, they likened Tezcatlipoca to Satan, to the devil, in Quetzalcoatl as the uh, Christ figure. What happened with Quetzalcoatl and Tezcatlipoca after the Fifth World? Well, to Quetzalcoatl became sickly. And a few of the sorcerer gods just wanted to just be mean. They didn't like him, especially Tezcatlipoca. So he disguised himself as an old man and Quetzalcoatl said I, I was foretold that you would come an old man would help me and he goes yeah I brought this medicine for you Quetzalcoatl drink and what it really was was pulque which is a type of Aztec alcohol very strong stuff and he gave it to Quetzalcoatl and he said drink some more drink some more till he got him drunk and he had Quetzalcoatl do all these terrible things sin in, in, in the Aztec world and blind sinful things and in which he had him have sex with his own sister and some say even forced it. it it depends on the story that he tempted his sister that he pushed himself on his sister so when Quetzalcoatl woke up with the next when <laughs> when he finally woke up and sobered up with the world's worst divine hangover Quetzalcoatl showed him his soul in the obsidian mirror and Quetzalcoatl saw himself as debased saw himself as horrifying as corrupt and Quetzalcoatl was so upset that he left that he left the Aztecs, but he said he would be back in the 57-year cycle. 54, 50, 57. And which Tezcatlipoca immediately took over. Now, one of the things he did with the Toltecs is that he tricked, said to trick the Toltecs with a great festivity with partying and everything. And what he was said is pretty much to cause us such a fright to them that they ran and pretty much fell off the bridge and into water. And what ever left kind of like lost their marbles, so to say, because Quetzalcoatl loved the Toltecs. So as we see, he tempts Quetzalcoatl to drunkenness carnal love, debauchery, and for lack of a better word, sin, in which she shamed Quetzalcoatl into leaving. Now, one of the other things that Tezcatlipoca deals with is storms. In fact, in fact, Guatemala's and then Guatemala eventually had revered this god as a lightning god and called him Huracan, where we get the word hurricane from. Even in Puerto Rico, the god Huracan was honored. The lord of storms, lightning, and hurricanes, tempests, strong winds and rains, 
thunder and lightning. Oh my. So Tess cut the book book on his head to make himself invisible, but be omnipresent. He knows your thoughts and he knows your fears. Some of the words, like one name is, one of the names that I find very beautiful is Nightwind. That's one of his names, Nightwind. I love it. Watch it. doesn't have a beautiful sound to it, Night. And she deals with the wind of the night, and sometimes this is not to be so good at times. Sometimes it could bring plagues. So Yeoto is a warrior, and we also get Telpokli, which is uh, a youthful man, young man, a boy, sort of like in his teens. Also, none of his names, I can't. I don't remember the. It, I think it's called Tel Telpo, oh God, Telpokali, which is young man's house. He's also another name, which is uh, I'm trying to remember the name. We are his slaves. That's actually one of his names, which. Just be picks that you don't escape from him. I mean, he has many, many different names. Enemy of and the enemy, as well as enemy of both sides. I mean, he could switch both sides in the war. Like he may favor one side and then favor the other and have pit them against each other. Kill them all and let the gods sort them out. It is said that after Mexico became Christianized, that Tezcatlipoca despised that. And he says he'll bring back the old pagan ways, which is coming back. And yes, it's different. Not different. I mean, I don't know anyone sac ripping hearts out and sacrificing humans. And I would call the police. So. He's for the old pagan ways. Tezcatlipoca. Is one of the diseases he said to bring. Is leprosy. And he can turn someone into a. He can turn a rich man into a slave. Other things about this god, which you may find interesting, he deals with air, the element of air. So he also deals with the with the direction of north and air. He deals with the earth. His season is in May. His time of worship, his major worship. But also, we can also honor him when the dark half of the year begins. And another day, since he represents ancestral memory, he represents the dead. He also represents death. We can also honor him in Samhain and also the Mexican Day of the Dead. And he does deal with the ancestors. He does deal with spirits. He does deal with ghosts and phantoms and ghouls. Ooh. He does deal with the creepy shit. In fact, uh, one of the gods that I was terrified of when I did a ritual, and I, like I talked about my other ritual, my other presentation, Dumavati, was Tezcatlipoca. When I first called him, he was terrifying to me. I wanted to run out, and that intrigued me. So I kept working with him. And this god can be very creepy. So, yes. And I do love him now. I really do.
So other things about this God is, okay, things that you, should I get into the offerings or should I tell you more stories? Let me get into the offerings before I forget. Tuscarly Polka loves obsidian, black mirrors, marijuana, if it, you know, tobacco, copal, black copal, as well as white copal, copal oil. He loves incense. He loves music. He loves parties. He loves alcohol, especially strong alcohol and even agave alcohol. Agave is a good a good offering to him too. He loves chocolate. You could give it to him as food. You can give it to him as smoke. You can give it to him as liquid salt, chocolate, make him some hot cocoa. He likes sweet things. I noticed that. He does like meat. He is a he is a carnivore after all. I mean a jaguar. Corn, any kind of corn, corn uh, bread is a good idea. Roasted corn, boiled corn, anything with corn is popcorn. It's pretty cool. I also notice he does like blood. So you can give him an offering of your own blood. Personally, I don't do animal sacrifice. I never did, and I'm not into it. I do offer meat, though. So, it's just not my thing. Now, another stone that he likes is turquoise. So, you can offer him, that's his second stone of choice, turquoise. You could give him turquoise. He also likes the color of the rainbow. So, you can make, one of the things that, uh, a friend made was well she's an ex friend she made him a little scarf with rainbows on it and speaking of stones another stone that he does like is jade he also likes offerings of gold why not it's riches right he loves elaborate things music give him flutes you can give him bones he does like that so just just also how about chocolate hearts the hearts represent the heart that was offered to him when they ripped it right out of the person's chest obsidian knives and since he is a god of war he does he would appreciate even modern things bullets Gunpowder, arrowhead, especially obsidian arrowheads. So you can give them things of war. Other things that he likes. Is that it was said that the slaves were kind of sacred to him and the poor. In fact, that's the name I was thinking of. Titla Kawan. Titla Kawan. Titla Kawan, which means, again, we are his slaves. We, so... Tezcatlipoca. Now, more of his positives were on here. We see the god of opposites is Omakato. Which, again, Omakato is the god of our aristocracy, parties, festivity. However, Omakwato is a god of thieves, criminals, and also those who practice 
quotations black magic. So those of the left-hand path may find this guy very interesting because he does magic like that. He does magic for uh, love, well, love and carnal desires, getting what you want, getting what you desire, war spells, protection spells, spells to, to uh, appease him, to protect, say hurricane, maybe you can, people can steer it off or protect yourself if the hurricane is gonna come or maybe protect your property or help keep the lights on to help protect you and yours he's a god of storm spells good so when you hear the storm day looks like turns dark that's a good time to call him like ball he's like ball in that way hell ball he also deals with cursing, from minor curses to major to death curses. He's also a god punishments and binding, binding your enemy, banishing your enemy, to even inflict madness upon your enemy and sickness. He can give you sickness and he could damn well heal it, but he could damn well give it to you. Precious Owl, ooh, the Owl, bird of witchcraft, and was also considered, uh, ooh, ooh, scary stuff. And so, and of course, you know, the vulture dealing with the dead, eating the dead, picking the bones off the dead. He's a god of money, too. He can cause you to have money or cause it to lose it so again he can help you with that now Tezcatli Polka the foot his foot that he he lost was to, uh, what's, it's sort of like the, the, the sort of kind, not totally, but it's like Marduk and Tiamat, but it was with Tezcatlipoca who joined up with, uh, Quetzalcoatl to help when the, to get the sea monster. Oh, I can't think of her name right now. It's actually a fem female. And what he did was sacrifice his leg so that she would bite him and that he they would slay her and the the belly was turned into the sky the back was to the earth and of course we had uh from her dead flesh and hair with trees and grass and caves and streams from her nose and eyes so we see the same thing that happened to her happened to tiamat So Tezcatli Polka is a very lustful god. Oh, here's my other assistant, Shadow. So now we see another cat. He's the king of the house. He's the old man of the house. Tezcatli Polka has four wives. And his main wife is very beautiful. His main wife is Shotsi Quetzal, the precious flower. He loves her a lot. As Latin, as, I'm sorry, at, not as Latin, I'm, I'm thinking of something else. Atlant, Atlanton, Toin. should have wrote this down. Atlant, Atlantoan, so she quits so wheat to Chihuato. not to be considered with the other guy, we to Pokley, and she loan 
the X is a, is a she, sh, so it's pronounced different. It's not like a Z or a, it's she, she. So, and in Nahuatl, actually we have four words that I know in English. That is part of the English language, by the way. We have chili. T-H-I-L-I. We have coyote. Coyote. And Nahuatl, coyote is what we say. Avocado. And chocolate. Yeah, chocolate is a Nahuatl. And chocolate is actually very sacred to the Aztecs. Is sacred. So is copo. And you can give them copo oil, like I said, copo resin, burn the copo. He likes that. So there was actually a festivity when they caught, when there was war and they would go for, for like prisoners and slaves and stuff. And they, when they caught someone, they would take a fine young man, very strong man. Now for a whole year, they would prep this guy, teach this guy, treat him like royalty. And they would dress him up. They would give him fine foods. They would, he would represent Tezcatlipoca on the earth. And soon towards the end, of this year they would give him four young beautiful maidens to represent one of his four each one of each of his four wives and then which which i did told before atla atla tonin so she quits so his main one she lo she lonin and huichiguato And at the end, he would go up the temple and he would play a flute. Go up the step, stomp on the flute. Play the other, stomp on the flute. Play another, stomp on the flute. Play another, stomp on the flute. Represents his, mag his music. But also, at this point, he was rich. He was part, he was represent an aristocrat. And towards the end of his life, he gives it all, it, it's all taken from him. And then he's promptly sacrificed where his chest is opened and they rip out his heart. And then they start over again. They pick another man and the cycle continues and continues and continues until the end of the Aztec Empire. Which was brought on by the Spaniards. Cortez. Hernan Cortez. Now, yes, they did a lot of sacrifice. Yes, they did a lot of barbaric shit. But don't you think for one second that the Spaniards were light and holy and you guys checked with blah, 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 barbarians. Because remember how, how the Spaniards were having their Inquisition time. Burning, torturing, raping. Anyone who's considered you pagan heretic witch so yeah don't give me that shit so and by the way when the natives the surrounding natives that were oppressed by the Aztecs saw the Spaniards as saviors and they joined up and they realized the Aztecs were far more nicer and so much better to live under than what was happening with the Spaniards in which they brought, yes, the Inquisition to Mexico. Where they thought life was hard under the Aztecs. Oh, it was heaven compared to what the Spaniards did. Especially the eradication they did, the extermination. So what the Aztecs killed was nothing compared to what the Spaniards did. So don't give me that shit. Because that's what I hear. And it's shit. I 
I'm just trying to think of that uh, sea monster. Compactly. And she was also called another word. And she was pretty much the primeval sea monster. Sort of like part toad, part frog, fish, and crocodilian in nature. And she was always hungry. And she had to go in order for the fifth world to be made. So sort of like Tiamat and Marduk. And look at my presentation on Tiamat to see all about her. And of course, she's in it. Tiamat. So, yeah. Tezcatlipoca does have a wicked sense of humor. He has... He does have a sense of humor. Oh, and another name of him. He's both the Lord, the, the God of near and far. And I said his name is Toke Na, Nahuake. Toke Nahuake, the God of near and far. So it means he's near, he's far. He's also called Tu Reed. T W O R E E D. I'm just trying to think of the word. Bear with me. Ome Akato. So what else do I want to talk about him? So he's also said to also walk with a limp because he sacrificed part of his leg and walks with an obsidian, which he can use his obsidian as mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the prettiest or ugliest of them all? So he can show you what you truly are with his obsidian leg or with his obsidian mirrors. He can literally lift up his leg and say, this is who you really are. He can show you deep and ugly truths about you. He can show you your valor, your cowardice. He can show you possible futures. He can show you your past. He can help you with ancestral memory and past life memory. So he is a powerful God, but he's also a God of conflict, embodiment of change through conflict. He can show you all this in his obsidian mirror. And I do like scrying. I do have uh, different crystal balls. I have selenite. I have clear quartz. I have, of course, obsidian. A big obsidian ball. Sometimes Tezcatlipoca can tempt us into self-destruction. But sometimes when he takes the form of the jeweled fowl, one of his name, jeweled fowl, or turkey, he can also cleanse the well. The jewel fowl helps you with the the seed, but with the turkey, he can cleanse contamination from your soul, from your being. He can absolve you of your guilt and overcome your fate. There is, as in one of Crowley's rituals, there is no grace, there is no guilt. This is the law, do what thou wilt. The mass of the phoenix. That's what's in there. There is no grace, there is no guilt. This is the law, do what thou wilt. Now, he is rules. The days with the number 10. So the, like the 10th 
of any month. You can honor him. Now, he's also considered a god. Not only is he a god of death and destruction, he's also a god of creation. And one of his names is by he by whom we live. So, don't think he's all about, you know, smashing shit up. He's also called the possessor of the sky and earth. Tezcatlipoca is uh, we also a god of discord chaos but he's also a god of rulership in fact when the kings when the king became the almighty chief king they would do certain rituals in front of of his image in which that their rulership their kingship will be official now another thing is he's also a god of beauty handsomeness he's always seen he's seen as a handsome man sometimes pretty scary too God of divination and prophecy, not just divination and fortune telling, but prophecy of what's going to happen. So, what else do I want to talk about? Tezcatlipoca does have an angry disposition. But I do worship him. I do honor him. He does help me with certain things, which I'm very grateful. And I told him that I would do this presentation to him. I know he's not certain people cup of tea. That's fine because he's my cup of tea. And like I said, his main uh, spirit, his main Nagual is the Jaguar. And the Jaguar to the Aztec was the apex predator. Tear your shit up. And fuck you sideways. That's what it would do. And it was a very carnivorous. It's a very carnivorous animal. Very beautiful jaguar. It's very beautiful. The test. Oh, by the way, the Aztecs had their uh, so-called letters. Actually, they wrote in pictographs. And they did have a written language. Now, there's few surviving representation of Tezcatlipoca to this present day, thanks to the fucking Catholic priests and their shitty inquisition, smashing everything and destroying everything. Ooh, this is it, the devil. Psh, let's go kill people. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. But true. They fucking just, you know, a lot of the, some of the codexes were fucking destroyed by them. And also another thing that the Spaniards brought was a gift of smallpox.
Anyways, I don't want to get into that tantrum. That I don't want to get into that. Because I can go on and on and on about it. But this is neither the time nor place. Which I did in my presentation in person to test Kotlapolka, which I used to hold. Tescat Lapoca will help you with learning the occult and magic. He really, really enjoys it. He loves magic. So you can leave things. Another thing is a deck of oracle cards, a deck of tarot, your struggles, even a cauldron. Older near him. No. Tiathame or Athame, depending on how you want to talk about it. Your wand. So. Tezcatlipoca. I like to call him Tezzy for sure, but never to his face. Well, I'm doing it now, Tezzy. So that's just my little nickname for him. Like I said, he could be found. He also likes desolate places. He likes caves. A wild place, the wilderness, forests, jungles, deserts, his place. Crossroads, whatever have you. Places of the dead. Like, yeah, he deals with the like I said, he deals with the ancestors. He deals with death. Things that you can do for him. Since I don't have a Patreon account, please think about donating to places that protect big cats, especially including jaguars. There's a place in Florida, Tampa, Florida, called the Big Cat Sanctuary. You may want to donate to them. And you could do it in the name of Tezcat Lapoca. So we really need to protect these big animals, these big cats. To any organization that protects and preserves jaguars, they're being hunted to extinction, unfortunately. So there's so much to Tezcat Lapoca that meets the eye. And maybe if you're the left-hand path, even if you're not left-hand path, but left-hand path may find them very interesting indeed. Very interesting to work with. So let me show you again this beautiful stand, image that I made of him because I could not find an image. So we have north, east, south, and west, which west represents the water of blood, rivers of blood. Not joking about that either. But I want to thank you for watching, and I really appreciate you, and I appreciate all my subscribers and all those who have liked my videos and given me comments. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And if you really like this video, please think about subscribing and share this video with your friends, family, your social media, and your Facebook groups. And thank you so much. And as always, blessed be. Hail to Tezcatlipoca.